Hey guys, it's Mike from HoneyTrek.com and we are here actually back in our apartment after 571 days on the road through South America, Africa, Asia, Oceania, and now back in the States and we wanted to just check in, say hello, talk a little bit about what we packed, what things we ditched on the road, what things we loved, how we used certain things, and just give you a little look into our backpack and see what we used on the road and help you pack for your own trip. So, um, kind of our overarching theory is you can get clothes almost anywhere on the road, pack your favorites, try not to be too much of a, an outdoor sports store, you know, walking model with the zip-off pants and the wicking coat, you know, wicking shirts and, and everything. Just go with what feels comfortable on your body and um, you know, wear that out there. There'll be a few occasions where you might need those super high-tech uh, gear, but overall, just your, your normal set of clothes from your closet should do. So, here is the backpack, the Gregory Baltoro 65, that uh, was my trusty steed on the road, so a 65 liter pack, fit everything here, plus a lot more that we'll get to in the next video uh, when you get into some of the technology and, uh, and other items. So, we carry a rain pack that's in this side pocket here. So that goes on whenever we get a little rain or drizzle or our 10 day hike in Nepal. This came in handy for sure. And then another thing related to the pack is this outdoor products bag. And it slips right over top of the bag, zips up, gives you a little bit more security. You can throw a lock on there, lock this bag, and also good for when you're doing uh, buses through Africa and Asia, a lot of times they'll throw your backpack up on the roof. So one, it keeps sticky fingers out of your bag. Two, it keeps your bag uh, in a little bit better shape and you don't look as, uh, you know, as much of a, a uh, reason for theft. So speaking of theft, this is another thing we had on the trip which came in handy um, a fair amount. It's a little bit heavy, I would say. It's the PackSafe uh, 85 liter, so it can fit over an 85 liter bag, so sometimes we do it over this bag and one of our little electronics bags. It is fairly heavy, you'll feel your own when you go to the store, but basically it pops out and it's a full mesh sack that wraps around your bag, cinches tight, and then you can lock it to the bed frame in a dorm or you know, we went on one glacier hike where we actually uh, just locked it right up to a tree. So, can come in handy, and when it does, you're really thankful that you've got it so that you can go away and have that peace of mind. If you're going on a trek for five days and you want to leave your bag at a hotel or a hostel, you can do it and feel comfortable. So, now I'll get into a little bit of my clothes, and was definitely surprised at how much fewer clothes I had than her. So you can check out her video if you want to uh, take a look. But I feel pretty good about everything I brought on the trip, and I didn't really feel like there was anything missing that I wish I had, and if there was, you can buy almost anything in most countries around the world. Sometimes you might be in a remote part of that country and not be able to find it, but in every major city, you'll have clothing stores and places to buy toiletries and pillows and new shoes and all that stuff, so don't get too stressed out about packing the exact right thing because you won't be able to find it anywhere in the world. A lot of these things I did purchase abroad. So, I'll start with what's on my body. I've got uh, this white button down shirt which I actually picked up in New Zealand, uh, and a pair of khaki shorts, one pair of underwear, and then I'd usually be wearing a pair of flip flops. Uh, that's a pretty common outfit for me. Then I've got a brown belt here which goes with my khakis, these shorts, or a pair of khaki slacks that I just picked up at I think the Gap, and a pair of jeans which I liked. Um, I didn't wear it as much in Asia, I would say if your trip is going to take you just to Asia and other, you know, really warm countries that have a lot of beaches, I would leave the jeans at home because they're pretty heavy. Um, they're more for walking around cities in cooler climates when we were in South America, parts of uh, Australia and New Zealand, and now on our upcoming trip to Europe, we'll definitely get a lot more use out of it. But as for Asia, if that's your trip, I would leave the jeans behind. This pair is just an old navy pair of 
pants, kind of thin, just a pair of beaters, but I use these for hiking or trekking, things like that. They're not technical at all, they're probably 15 bucks, but if you throw these with a pair of long johns underneath, they can provide a lot of warmth and they're thin enough that they dry quickly and um, so those are good. I've got a pair of shorts here, also pick those up on the road, just a pair of uh, shorts for wearing around the city. I've got two pair of board shorts, which I love, I'm kind of a, a board short type guy just for lounging around the house and even in Asia walking around a lot in board shorts. Most of my days were spent in them, so it's good to have two if you go swimming, one can dry while you're wearing the other one. They pack up really tight and uh, I like that. These are my long johns, I kind of touched on those. Really great for layering both under a pair of pants. These can get really warm and then as a top I'd throw a t-shirt on, my long johns, uh, my fleece and jacket and be ready for anything we hike to Glacier in Patagonia with that setup. So uh, walking front to back we've got this sweater here which um, yeah, I really like that for just dressing up an outfit, throw it over a button down or over one of these short sleeve button downs and it can both provide a lot of warmth and also make for a nice evening. Also got this little plastic bag here which I wrap my button down in just so it doesn't get kind of beat up with the boots and the shoes in the backpack and, and still stays fairly in good shape. Another button down shirt so that's um, two button down shirts I have on the road and then one, two, three, four, five different t-shirts. Probably could do with four but you know I picked this one up in Thailand and um, you know so four or five t-shirts should be good. On the socks front I have one pair of medium weight hiking socks just for normal treks in warm climates. I've got a heavy wool pair, a smart wool for you know when we're up on the glaciers or the temperature drops below 32. I'll break these socks out or for a cold night in a place without heating. I've got two pair of dress, sho dress socks to go with my uh, dress shoes and then a pair of black socks for hiking as well. Um, for underwear, we've got four pair here, one pair on me, so five pair. Three of them are ex officio, uh, four of them are ex officio actually, and then just a pair of boxers. On jacket wise, we've got a fleece, we've got a marmot fleece here, and my jacket, I think it's marmot as well, yep, got a marmot jacket, so it's just a rain shell, it's got a look, you know, two layers there, but provided just for, uh, just for water, and then this fleece gives me a tremendous amount of warmth, and once you're doing any activity, unless you're doing multiple days, you know, camping in the snow, this setup with just a long john, a fleece, and this jacket is good enough to take you almost anywhere cold, and then I've just got a pair of Eastern Mountain Sports gloves, and a little tiny beanie, and that's uh, that's pretty much my clothes for summer, fall, and winter. On the shoes front, um, I've got three pair. I've got a pair of flip flops that are my staple. Uh, I've actually been through five different pair of flip flops on the trip, just from using them every single day, even on on some hikes, some unanticipated hikes. And then a pair of hiking boots. Um, these are. Just some Merrill waterproof boots. I probably could have done with a low heel boot, so if you're trying to save a little space in your bag or go with something that could also be a good city shoe, which I might do on the way to Europe, is go with a low, a low riser boot as opposed to a full boot. But these were great when it got into some serious climbing in, uh, in Nepal and Patagonia. These shoes kind of double for me. They're Patagonia from the top. They could pass as a semi-dress shoe but they've also been used for city walks and games of tennis and workouts and uh, they're pretty pretty versatile on the shoe front. Then I've got a bucket hat. This is a new bucket hat that I picked up because I just wanted to show you the original bucket hat who's been around for about 15 years. Started out without a single hole in it and he's taken quite a beating over the last 570 days so yeah, picked this one up in Vietnam. On to our pillows and blanket set. Um, right now there's just pillows in here because uh, I wanted to show you our sheet setup as well. This is a Sea to Summit compression sack and normally we'd have two pillows and both sets of sheets for me and Anne in here. Scrunches down to probably about 50% larger than this is right now. 
I mean, I took my pillow. We both took our pillows that we slept on at home. I took mine and cut it in half and re-sewed it just to save some space and some weight. But as far as having your own pillows on the road, I'll talk to that first. It is an amazing creature comfort that helps every night on the road feel a little bit closer to home and definitely would make you and your friend or you and your spouse or just you on a solo trip a lot more comfortable because you do sleep in maybe some unsavory places and to have your own pillow and your own sheets to lay your head is great. Um, this is a cotton, I think it's called the cocoon and right now it's basically shaped like a sleeping bag liner. Uh, it's all cotton so it is a little bit heavier but that also means it's a lot warmer and a lot more comfortable than the silk or other synthetic fibers. So we went with the cotton and then it actually unzips and I can take Anne's, which is um, same size, unzip it and put them together and make a queen size sheet top and bottom. So we're fully cocooned in wherever we want to be and we've slept in a lot of crazy places. Now I will go on to some of our toiletry things. Um, we bought this first aid kit at Camp Moore, which is a good peace of mind and maybe good to have, but we'll probably drop it on the way to Europe. We haven't used anything except Band-Aids and Neosporin out of here on the whole trip. Not to say you wouldn't need it, and maybe it's a little case of uh, if you've got it, nothing happens, and when you don't have it, everything happens, but uh, maybe a bit of overkill there on the first aid kit. So yeah, Neosporin is a good one. Cortisone, recommend that, especially when you get into Asia, you're going to uh, come encounter with some, uh, some different bug bites and, uh, and, and plants and things that might make you itch. Um, got my Listerine here, that's for sure. Nail clipper, floss, always good. Toothbrush, toothpaste, I mean, you can pick these things up anywhere in the world, but I like to keep a big one on hand so we don't have to go shopping too often. Um, for my cologne. I like my polo black and Travelo makes this really neat little device that you just take the lid off, put it on top of your cologne, pump it up and then you fill it up you're good to go for a few months with that so that's a neat way to not have to carry around this big clunky bottle. Um, got my Old Spice, my razor, uh, Ann and I use the same um, type of razor. We both use the Gillette Mach 3, so we both have our own handle, and then we just need one set of packs, so whenever somebody's low, we just replace it. Um, mine silver, hers is gold, so we can keep an eye on that. Um, and then we've got some Cipro, which we haven't used often, maybe twice on the entire trip, but great for um, stomach things and a variety of, um, of issues, UTIs for girls, it's, it's great for that. Um, and then Aleve is great for lots of things, namely uh, long nights in Asia. Um, and then we've got my soap, which for me is also my shampoo, so that cuts down on both my weight and the need to buy more shampoo. But um, that's the soap, little bug spray there, some 30 sunblock, important to uh, have with you at all times because the sun in Asia is really strong and when you're on your own RTW, you're out in the sun for 10 to 15 hours a day. So it's important to take care of yourself in that front. Uh, all of the toiletries, we always put in these hefty, um, or you know, just Ziploc baggies, the freezer kind with the little drawstring we love. Sometimes we even double it up. But before you go on your trip, pick up a 20 pack of these and just jam it in your backpack. You'll use it for all sorts of things, cords, papers, toiletries, um, food that you need, you know, snacks and stuff, so they're definitely important. This is our, uh, our towel. It's another Sea to Summit dry light, and um, we started the trip with two of these towels, and about three quarters of the way through the trip, we lost one of them, and then ended up just sharing one towel, which isn't as bad as it seems. Um, so that's another good way to save on weight, is to just bring one dry light towel, maybe one person showers at night and one in the morning. Um, and that is our towel. We've got an umbrella here, a little portable umbrella. And this is my Norelco razor, which both does my beard and also and cuts my hair every uh, two weeks. So that is pretty much my kit. That's my gear. Um, hope you had fun watching this video and following along on the honey trek. 
Obviously, if you're watching this, you are thinking about or looking to do your own trip around the world, and we would love to help you out with that. So we've actually started a division of Honey Trek called Trip Coach, where we help people prepare uh, in one-on-one -on -one sessions. We meet with you either in person or over Skype to help you prepare for your own trip around the world. And if you'd like to find out more about it or see a little video we made about Trip Coach, you can head over um, to honeytrek.com slash tripcoach, all one word, and watch that, read a little bit more about what we do, and check out some of our other videos. You've got Anne's packing, long-term travel packing for girls, and then the two of us together are going to do a tech video as well. So check both of those out, and we'll see you on the road.